Like what? Hey, what's up everyone? Pete Gallia here. Hope this video finds you doing well. And today we're gonna talk a bit more about some asalato. And uh, we're gonna talk about a little trick. Um, not quite sure what it's called, but for today we're gonna call it the backflip. So you just saw me do it in the little intro there, but I'm gonna do it again. Essentially it looks like this. So it starts out in this position and essentially what it allows you to do is to play groupings of four and landing on either the E or the A of the beat. Okay, so let's rewind that a little bit in case you're not quite familiar with uh, the Asalato and what I just said. So if you've checked out some other videos, you might already know that um, you can use certain movements and tricks to create different groupings or um, even subdivisions. Uh, for example, threes as takita, 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 takita. Maybe fives, tadi genato, tadi genato, tadi genato, tadi genato, tadi genato, tadi genato, ta. In this case, we're going to be talking about fours. So, I mean, if you want to learn a little bit more about that, check out my video on decoding polyrhythms with the kashaka. It should be coming up on this side, I think. I always get confused. This side. And you can find a little bit more in depth of some information over there. So, of course, in terms of playing groups of four, you can use the trick called the air turn, which I mentioned in that video, but that allows you to play groupings of four either on the downbeat or the upbeat in a 16th note context. So, uh, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a or one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. So, uh, the downbeat or the end, uh, in case you don't know what 16th notes are, um, basically it's just four subdivisions per beat. So, in that case, you would count one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. So, so far, you should be up to speed with what 16th notes are and which trick we're going to use for what. Now, in terms of if you want to hit the E's or the A, so 1 E and the 2 E and the 3 E and the, or potentially even 1 E and the 2 E and the 3 E and the, then the air turn doesn't really work. Just, again, the nature of this instrument is very, like, uh, physics-based, I guess, which is really cool. So, we're going to learn the backflip today. So, how do you do it? To practice this trick, you're gonna want to start here, essentially, and the trick involves throwing the bottom ball inwards, and then it's gonna come round this way, and then you catch it under once again. I'll show you a couple of times, so from here, So, to be honest, it doesn't really make sense to practice it not in the context of pulse or time, so let's get that 16th note shake going, and it's gonna hit either the E or the A. So, if we're playing 1E and a 2E and a 3E and a 4E and a 1E and a 2E and a 3E and a 4E and a... It's either gonna hit the A, 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 or E, 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 E. So familiarize yourself a little bit with those parts of the subdivisions. Um, there's a lot of exercises and stuff you could do uh, to get more familiar with different parts of the pulse. Maybe I'll do a video on that, probably on the drums or the pad though, because uh, it's good stuff to know. So let's get those uh, backflips happening and hitting the A, uh, just because it's easier to start there and you can shift everything an eighth note uh, a little bit later if you want to get it on the E. So. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. So to do this, essentially get your shakes going and you want to throw that ball backwards on the E. So if you throw it on the E, it's gonna land on the A. And later on, if you want to get the click on the E, you throw it on the A. So. 1E and a 2E and a 3E and a 4E and a 1E and a 1E and a 1E and a 2E and a 3E and a 4E and a 1E and a 2E It's really hard to do slow 
There you go. If you want to get the click on the E, let's throw it back on the A, and then we hit the E. This one's a little bit more uh, weird, at least for me. The other one's easier, but practice them both. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two. Four, one, a two, e and a two, e and a four, e and a one, e and a two, e and a three, e and a four, e and a one, e and a two, e and a three, e and a four, e and a one. So that's pretty much it. Again, I think I mentioned this already. It's a bit of an awkward trick to do. It took me a minute to get used to it just because like throwing it inwards and catching it on the outside again for me was a bit of a weird thing. Like I've had a lot of trouble actually catching it. It kept like um, slipping out of the bottom of my hand, but once again, just keep practicing it, and uh, obviously if you have a comment or a question, just leave it down below and I'll do my best to help you out. But yeah, now that you have that down, I want to give you two ideas, essentially, for how to use them in a rhythm, which isn't just... So, I find this particular trick... I keep doing this, holding it as if I'm presenting you with the asalato. So two really cool ways you can use this sort of trick slash rhythm is if you're playing in five or if you're playing in seven, which I think is a super underrated part of playing the asalato because, of course, considering 99% of the music us Westerners consume is in 4-4, four four, I guess most of what's played on the asalato is also in 4-4. Four four. It's, again, the nature of the instrument. But why not play in odd time? I am a big fan and nerd when it comes to odd time, so let's apply some five and seven. Yeah! So if we're gonna play in five, first and foremost, this is gonna be our rhythm. One, two, three, four, five. 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 One. So essentially you're just doing a regular old flip-flop catch. One, two, three, four, five. And you throw that back flip after. So you're gonna be hitting, if we're playing in five, four, counting eighth notes, one and two and three and four and five and one and two and three and four and five and one and two and three and four and five and one. You're gonna be hitting the one, the two and, and the four and. And once you make uh, contact back here, don't grab it, let it bounce off to start the rhythm again. So, one and two and three and four and five and one and two and three and four and five and one and two and three and four and five and one and two and three and four and five and one and two and three and four and five and one and two and three and four and five and one and two and three and four and five and one and two and three and four and five and one and two and three and four and five and one. Let's start with both hands now. Why not? Why not? One two three four five 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 There you have it. So one challenge I have sometimes, again, particularly with my left hand, because I learn everything with the right first, it keeps hitting the little uh, fleshy part of my palm here, and I kind of find it difficult to catch. But as always, I find the solution to most things in terms of technique is always just relax. If you're gonna relax, you're gonna allow it to take the most natural path, and it's gonna get pretty comfortable within a little bit of time, you know? Practice the right on its own, practice the left on its own, and then together, and that's always gonna help. One little tip I'd like to give at this point, um, if you've made it this far through the video, you are super cool, but you know that already, is don't be afraid to exaggerate the movement, like make it a bit more obvious for yourself and for your body to kind of handle it. So when you're throwing that ball inwards, really throw it inwards. <laughs> Like, really make an effort to throw it with some force inwards. And that's gonna help, number one, to make the rhythm a bit smoother, but 
Also, on top of that, one really important thing is that it also kind of stretches the rope out because the moment you have a little bit of slack in it and it's not uh, tight, I guess, is the rhythm's gonna end up sloppy once again. The physical nature of the instrument comes into play there. So make sure you're... Like, you know, give it a lot of... Uh, force, I suppose. Last but not least, let's talk about a rhythm in seven. Same thing, just add another backflip to it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 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 One. I suppose you could keep going and just Have fun with it. Now let's play the rhythm in seven with both hands, just to make everything equal. I need to relax. Ah, there you have it. So I find myself really like trying hard to make the rhythm work, um, particularly with both hands, because I'm, you know, sometimes one hand is easier, of course. But in those moments, if you're anything like me, just take a deep breath, keep going through it, and over time, you will get better at it. And um, yeah, this has been a tutorial on the backflip with the Asalato. It's a cool little uh, trick you can involve in your playing. Maybe a little bit of freestyle, and I'll try and incorporate it in there for you. gives you more opportunities for rhythms and uh, that kind of cool stuff that you can play. And that's the end. So yeah, I guess I don't really have much more to say for today. Thanks for watching my video. Once again, I'm Pete Gallia. If this is your first time checking out my channel, I talk a lot about Asalato. I like rhythm and polyrhythm in general. I do a little bit of uh, practice pad and drum kit stuff, like rudimental things and also like stuff based on the drum kit. I'm also a big fan of Conakol, which I really hope to incorporate a little bit more um, in terms of like introductory stuff into that as well. But yeah, of course, still a small channel here, so if you want to join the journey and uh, learn a bit more about Rhythm and hang out, uh, please feel free to subscribe and like and all of that. would be really cool to hear from you. So leave a comment with any feedback. It's always welcome. And particularly if you have any ideas for content, if you have something about Rhythm that you want to learn about or that's confusing you, something I can help you with, related to percussion or drums or just Rhythm in general, be in touch. I'd love to hear from you right down there. And yeah, um, cue a video of me playing the Asalato while a bunch of pop-ups show up and click one of them. See ya and happy practicing. Cheers. Goodbye and see you next week.